Happy Friday, you guys. So this is episode one. I am so excited. I'm nervous. Okay, let me tell y'all. The butterflies is butterflying. I was nauseous and everything, but I'm excited. Um, So this is episode one of my podcast, And Still a Mother. If you are listening to this on audio, you can also watch it on visual. I do have a YouTube channel for my podcast. It's called And Still a Mother. So if you're like me, where you like to look and listen at the same time, that will be the best option for you. So being that this is the first episode, let me just introduce myself. My name is Yvette. I am 28 years old. I have four kids, Elijah, which is 11, Noel, which is seven, and then I have twins, and their name is Khalil and Kehlani, and they are one years old. And the purpose of this podcast is because being that I am a young mom, I still try my hardest to live my life and still enjoy myself because I feel like we live in a world where a lot of people feel like the two can't coexist and that's not true. And I just want to show people that you can do this and do that and still be a mother, right? Because why does one have to cancel out the other? Of course, you have to do everything. And, you know, it has to be a balance. But it shouldn't have to cancel each other out. And I don't like that they feel like, when I say they, I mean society. I don't like that they put that on us, that that's how it should be. So that is the point of this podcast. We're definitely going to get deep. We're going to get into some things, honey, okay? But we also going to laugh. You know, I have a sense of humor and if I say something that might be like, mm, please don't take it too literally, okay? Because I just be, I just be talking sometimes, just be joking. So, at the beginning of each podcast, though, I definitely want to start out on a lighter note. So we, I have a segment that's going to be called Sweet and Sour, and that's where I tell you guys something that happened this week that was sweet and something that was sour. I'm going to always record these episodes on a Friday. Because I want it to be where it's like letting my hair down, especially like all of my weeks are eventful. Not one week goes by that's something that don't happen. So Fridays is the day where I'm going to record and y'all going to get these episodes because, listen, for a mom, I love Fridays. Sometimes because Fridays also mean that your kids no longer go to daycare or school. So (laughs) it's like a win lose, I guess. (laughs) But okay. So for me, let's start with sweet. So if you don't follow me on other socials, I love to read books. I read a lot of books. Sometimes I read multiple books simultaneously. (laughs) And it's just my thing. So a couple of weeks ago, I told the kids that I was going to look into getting them a pool And honestly, you guys, I just said that so they can leave me alone. I have not looked into getting a pool. So my son, he asked me, and ironically, you know how our phones be listening to us. Because the other day when I was on my phone, I had saw that an ad came up for Amazon. It was a pool, and it was like $800. So my son asked me yesterday, he was like, Ma, have you been looking into getting us a pool still? And I was like, yeah. He said, how much is it? I said, too much. And he was like, I know, but how much? I said, $800. And he was like, well, the pool that they want, because they want like a fancy pool. The pool that they're going to, if they get a pool, (laughs) it's not going to be a um, underground pool. It's going to be above ground. So the pool I was looking at was $800. So when I said $800, he was like, whew. He said, you need a get rich book. And I was like, oh, what? And he said, a get rich book. He said, you need to read the get rich book. And I said, what book is you talking about? He said, you know the book that has the gold bars on it? And you guys, my whole world lit up because a book that I was reading is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. If you haven't heard of it, go read it. 
and he has different covers for that book. I mean, when I've seen it, it was like different, many different versions of the book the same thing but just different covers and the cover that I have is green and it has a whole bunch of gold bars like a gold um like gold bars on it so that just lit my whole world up because even though I thought that he was not paying attention and this is my seven year old so I thought he would not have even paid attention to me reading that book and he 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 was so that just goes to show you that they are paying attention now let's get into the sour. The sour is kind of funny <laughs> and it's kind of sour also. So I was at the gym and sometimes when I'm on a Stairmaster, I like to sit down like at the 15 minute mark, like I'll sit on the steps real quick to catch my breath. So I was sitting on the steps and I had like kind of, um, my legs were open a little bit and I like felt something rip. So I'm sitting here looking in between my legs, not even caring who's around me looking. So I'm looking down in between my legs. And at the same time, I was on the phone with my sister talking to her. And she had told me that something cost like $250,000. And when she said that, my face immediately made like a disgusted look. So <laughs> as I'm looking down and it's making that disgusted look, Somebody started laughing that's on the Stairmaster too. And I'm looking at her like, what? And she was like, because you were looking in between your legs and you was making a face like it stink. <laughs> and here I am trying to explain to her. And she like, she just laughing, laughing, laughing. And then I heard her telling the person that she was with with it. And I'm like, now I'm going to be remembered as the girl with the funky coochie. That's what she going to think. So that was my sour for the week. It was funny. I ain't going to let it wear me because I know it's not true, but I could see how the two correlated. Um, so now let's go ahead and get into the topic at hand. You guys, I am 28 years old. Four kids. Three baby daddies. How in the hell did I get here? I mean, I know how I got here, but how did I get here? Like, have you ever sat and thought, like, you knew something was going on in your life and you just sit and think, like, what in the world? Like, how did I get to this point? And I feel like now, even though I'm young, I'm at that point where I'm like, how, when, where, what? Like, that's where I'm at. And I've never really sat and thought about it, but I sat and thought about it and I did get a little sad. And the reason why I got sad is because I never thought my life would be where it is now. And it's not saying that I'm sad about where is it now. It's not saying that I regret my children, but I just never thought, that this would be my life um just to give a little backstory like my dad is in my life I love my dad to death I have always been a daddy's girl still a daddy's girl um but my dad never really talked to me about guys that was just wasn't his thing we didn't talk about sex he didn't tell me about these no nah, I'm not even gonna go there <laughs> he didn't tell me about men and how they are at the time boys he didn't we didn't talk about that so it never was a thing where I kind of knew like how boys operated right I just knew that I was feeling myself smelling myself and I'm just like ooh, what's that so you know that is kind of like a bad thing that we really didn't talk about that but I mean I don't fault him at all you know it just is what it is like I just we didn't have those conversations and then with my mom she definitely told me like don't have sex don't be dealing with these dudes but she never really said why she just said don't do it <laughs> so in my mind I'm like don't do it that means do it like why I can't do it what it feel like what it look like and what it tastes like. It's like, no, nah, I'm playing, but <laughs> it's just, it's like, 
it just made me want to do it with her saying don't do it because I'm like why why can't I do it what's wrong with it and I remember even when I was a little girl my brother-in-law he told me like he was actually trying to talk to me about it and trying to talk to me about different things and I told him I just want to see for myself. I just want to learn for myself. And still to this day, all of these years later, he still tell me that, well, you always said you wanted to see for yourself. Now look where you at. And now I wish I can go back in time. Like, no, I don't want to see for myself anymore. So, but I mean, I'm here now. Um, so that's kind of a backstory on my upbringing. Um, so it's not like I have daddy issues my dad was in my life. I love my dad. He's a great father. He still is a great father. And he has always been there for me. But those are just conversations that we have never had. Maybe it's uncomfortable for him. If something is going on, I don't like, you know, as far as relationship wise, I really don't go to my dad. Um, I go to my mom now, me and her have those conversations, but I'm an adult and I have kids now. So she's like, well, girl, you already like, I mean, you already there. So <laughs> it's, it's, you know what I'm saying it's like it's just different now I'm an adult now so she like we we are more candid with each other when we have conversations because it's like well what what can she say to me that I can't you know what I'm saying that she wouldn't feel comfortable saying I mean I'm grown so it's just different um so I am young I am 28 and I, my first child came along when I was 16. My first child, which is 11 years old now, I got pregnant at 16 and I got pregnant by his dad, which is, we went to the same school together. We went to the same high school together. When I tell y'all I was gone, I mean gone. And the reason why I was gone was because I just thought he was so funny. I, that's all I kept telling my mom. He's so funny. Like he just made me laugh. And it's crazy how things that you fall in love with somebody with is the same thing that make you be like, get on my face. Like that is the exact, like that is now, if I have a conversation with him, that's how I feel. Like you take everything as a joke. Everything is a joke. You, you always got to make a joke about something and it irritates my soul. That's just how he always been. And you know, I was dealing with him. And even when I, f I was on birth control, I was on the pill, but I have never been good at taking the pill. I always like miss days or something like that. And I always try to like make it up. You know, like if you miss a day, they say take two the next day, like stuff like that. So that's what I was doing. And at the time when I thought that I actually had gotten pregnant, I actually took a plan B. Obviously it didn't work because my son is here. So I took a plan B and I actually found out I was pregnant when I was at work. So I used to work at in the mall at a children's store, <laughs> ironically, a children's clothing store. And I found out that um, I went like on my lunch break, I went and took a pregnancy test. Honestly, I don't even know why I took a pregnancy test, you guys, because I didn't even think I was pregnant. I... Like, I think I was maybe like a day or two late on my menstrual and I just decided to take a pregnancy test, but I really didn't think I was pregnant. I think the real reason why I took that pregnancy test is because somebody that was working at the same store with me, she was pregnant and me and her was real cool. So I just was like, well, let me see if I'm pregnant. Like, it's something cool or something like, girl, it was not cool. But so that's why I took the pregnancy test. And when it came out positive y'all I was no more good I mean I was crying and crying and crying and when I had called my son's dad and told him it's like immediately you knew that he was like I mean he was even you know like I said he joked a lot and one of the things that he said was for me to stick a hanger up me and that is something that to this day it has always stuck with me because even though I feel like that he was joking, I mean, he was making a joke of it. I feel like that he was kind of serious at the same time. Um, so that was hurtful. And I feel like, you know, I never really processed how that made me feel 
But now it's like now that I look at how things are now, I kind of see why he reacted the way that he reacted. Um, so immediately once he found out that I was pregnant, didn't deal with me at all. Didn't deal with me the entire pregnancy. And as you can, like, it's just, it's just, he just didn't deal with me. And luckily I was living with my parents. So my dad really stepped up and was a father figure for my son. So my son never really um, lacked a father figure because my dad made sure that everything that needed to be done to, you know, for him as a father, my dad was there. Like, it was never a moment that he was not there. And still to this day, it's the same way. And I remember, like, going through that pregnancy and feeling so alone and feeling embarrassed also being in school. I mean, it was my, I got pregnant my 12th grade year in high school and my son was born in January. So literally in the middle of the semester with me having midterms, I had to get excused because I was going to have a baby. And it just, it just, like it just was embarrassing I, I also remember me being in like I went to the uh the front desk for some like the front office in the school and I remember somebody asking me like is such and such your baby daddy like that's exactly how she said it's such and such your baby daddy and guess what I said no he sure not and he sure was I mean it's not I knew he was but I just was like no he sure not like because he wasn't dealing with me at all. So it's like, I just felt embarrassed. I felt hurt. I just, I felt all of the above. And I had no clue about being a mom. Like even to this day, my son is 11 and I feel like me and him grew up together. If it wasn't for my parents being there. And let me tell you, my parents, it's not like they just took care of my child and, I wasn't a mother to my child. No, from jump. Like that was my first child. And I was still a teenager. My mom, not once woke up in the middle of the night with me for my child. She did not play them games. She was getting her sleep. One thing you won't going to do is interrupt her sleep. So I was very much so a mother and I've always like kept jobs. I always made sure that Everything was taken care of that was supposed to be taken care of. I mean, at that time, like I said, I was working at a children's clothing store. And then um, eventually I started working a second job at a grocery store. And then I remember on my son's one year birthday, once he turned one, I had actually got a call and I got hired for my job that I've been working ever since then. So I, so I've been at my job for 10 years and I remember being so happy because they had offered me $13 at that time. I thought like, Oh my goodness. Like, because at that time I was making like $7 and 25 cents. So $13 was like mind blowing for me. So I was so happy, but I just say that to say it was never like I was a bum or living off of my parents or making my parents, well, not making, but allowing my parents to take care of my child. Like, no, that was not the case. Like I very much so was doing what I was supposed to do for my kids. And I remember I also was on government assistance. They were helping me with daycare assistance. And the very moment I start making that $13 an hour, they cut me off. So I was paying over $600 a month in daycare. So I just, I mean, it's not like, you know, even though I was very much so a teenager, I still made sure that my son was taken care of. He had what he needed. And we was just growing up together. Luckily, I had my parents there. I'm grateful. But we was just growing up together. So that was child number one. Let's go to child number two. So child number two came along when I turned 20 years old. So that was about a three-year gap because I had my first son at 17, got pregnant at 16, had him at 17. Then I got pregnant again at 20. So I got pregnant at 20. And 
you know how you go to the doctor's office and they tell you what day you conceive on? Okay. <laughs> I moved into my first apartment February the 7th of 2014. Guess what day I conceived on? February the 7th of 2014. <laughs> and y'all just dumb that's all i can say is just dumb 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 with that whole situation and the only thing that i could do as far as like giving you an example of where my mindset was at that time is that you know how like somebody might go to jail and they get out of jail and you you know be thinking in your mind you're like they better not go back or they probably do any you know better not do anything to go back but then they do something to go back and that's because, especially if that's all, like, if they were there since they were, like, a minor or something or since 18, that's all they know. I feel like that was the situation when it came down to me having a baby. That's all I knew because I had a baby when I was still a child. I got pregnant at 16. So I never was able to experience adult life. So when it came down to me getting pregnant at 20, that was because I wanted a baby. Why? I don't know. Now that I have experienced life, I know that there's so much life out there, so many things to do. So it's like, why bring another baby into the situation when you could have just got off with one? But nope, I went and had a baby number two. He was very much so planned, just dumb. That's all I can say, just dumb, 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 dumb. And his dad, I only knew him for three months before me and him was planning a baby with each other. That just goes to show you where my mindset was. Like, I don't even know where my mindset was because it just was so dumb. Like, why would you be trying to plan a baby and you just moved out of your parents' home into your own apartment? This is your first apartment that you have ever lived in on your own. You already have another child. Why would you go and do that? And I'm talking to myself, Yvette, why would you go and do that? I don't know. And then with that whole relationship with his dad, if you look up toxic in a dictionary, they go our picture right there looking straight dumb together. <laughs> um, it just was dumb. So I got pregnant at 20 and I end up bringing my second son into this world when I was 21. And that was just like it was just that whole situation that whole pregnancy was just terrible I was always crying always arguing all it just was always something and out of respect for his dad I'm not gonna go into details because it's just you know I want to be respectful to him so I'm not going to go into details of the things that transpired when I was pregnant and in our relationship. But honestly, I can't blame him for anything because the whole situation was just toxic and dumb. I can't say dumb enough. Take a shot for every time I say dumb. <laughs> um, It just was bad. It was just bad because like he was still growing up and I was still growing up. And we really thought that this is something that we wanted, not knowing that not even thinking about the fact of that when you have a child and when you get pregnant and bring a child into this world is that it, it just doesn't end there and I feel like a lot of the times people don't think about that part even when people to this day say they have baby fever I don't feel like that you actually like all you're looking at as as is oh I want a precious little baby a newborn baby like to smell their neck and do these things but it's so much more that comes with that and with that whole situation I was not thinking about that at all I feel like I wasn't thinking about that is because I was so blessed with my first son like he is just amazing he's amazing he's such a sweetheart he is just a mama's boy he loves me to death I mean he has always he's just amazing and when I had my second son Honestly, you know, I regret everything that I put him through when he was in my stomach as far as like always being stressed out, always crying, always arguing, because I feel like 
to this day, it has an effect on how he handled his anger and his behavior and things of that nature. Um, but I wasn't thinking about that when all I was thinking about was I had baby fever again and I wanted a baby. That's it. I didn't think about everything else that came with it. And, you know, it's just that part really, really saddens me because looking back, it's like, yeah, a lot of people could say they have done stupid things when they were young. They weren't thinking. But when it comes down to having a child and bringing a child into this world, it's like, yeah, you grow up. Your mindset gets better, as it should. But at the end of the day, the child is still there. The child doesn't grow, go anywhere. That is a permanent decision. And even though your child might be 18, because a lot of, of the times people say, oh, I'm done. I got 10 more years, eight more years or whatever. But I'm 28 and I still call my mom if something is going on. So, you know, yeah, the responsibility aspect might be lessened, but that is a permanent decision. This is somebody that's going to be your child for the rest of your life. So I was not, we was not thinking about that at all. And if I regret anything, that is something that I really, I don't regret my child within himself, but I just regret not thinking about all of those things. Like just dumb, like deciding to have a baby with somebody that I only knew for three months and that just goes back to say I didn't like that's all I knew all I knew was being a mom I didn't know anything about living my life going to party like I didn't know anything about that because I had my first child at 17 got pregnant at 16 I didn't know anything about that so it just it just was I just truly just was so blinded and not thinking that's all I can say with that situation. I was just not thinking. And I, I'm i just glad that I have changed my mindset. I'll say that. Um, so my second son is seven. That's who I was just speaking of. And now I have twins, which are one years old. Now, when it came down to having the twins, me and their dad is still very much together, okay? We are very much together. And the mom that I am now, you guys, is completely different than the person I was 10 years ago or 11 years ago. I'm just completely different. And that's why when it came down to having the twins, it felt like I was a first time mom all over again because here I am out here living my best life. I mean, even though I was, I had two children, I was still fortunate to have people that was willing to like watch my kids if I wanted to go somewhere or something like that, you know? And, um, I feel like that I did a good little gap between my second child and the twins. So it, it's like a, seven year gap. So, well, six years. And I was able to live, you know, live, go places, go on vacations, do different things. And, you know, now that the twins are here and I have the mindset that I have now, it's just completely different. I'm a completely different mom. And sometimes I look back and just wonder like, how did I get here? Because one thing about it, them baby daddies add up quick. And I'm not even saying that in a joking matter. But the thing is, it's like, how many people is with the person they were with when they were 17, 16? You know, a lot of people can't say that. For the most part, that's not how life goes. So to make a lifelong decision at that age, it's crazy. And I just was not thinking about it like that at that time. So it's like I have never been the type of person that wanted to continue to just stay with somebody because, oh, we have a child together. Why? Why would you do that if you're not happy in the relationship or happy? You know, it's a toxic environment for your kids. But on top of that, that contributes to having multiple fathers of your kids 
And, you know, that is something that is really, I feel like it's becoming like it. I can't even say it's, it's happening too often, but I do feel like that it is happening more now than it has happened, you know, years and centuries back. But I will say that I feel like, and this is just my personal opinion, I feel like back in the day when you had um, mom and dads that stuck together and they had multiple kids and things like that, even if they weren't happy, even if the father was out here, live, you know, doing their little thing, you know, and I feel like it was just looked down upon to leave the person you're married to or have kids with. So it's like women didn't do it. They didn't do it. So it's like I feel like now as we have evolved as a society, I feel like now women ain't going for that shit. Like if something if we're not happy, if a man is not living up to our expectations, we out. And even though, you know, I had my kids years ago, I've always had that mindset. Don't get me wrong. I have stayed in relationships far too long okay like baby you should have left at day 10 and you decided to leave at day 437 like I don't stay far too long um but I have never been that type of person to where I'm gonna stay in a relationship just for kids I'm not gonna do it at all and you know the it used to bother me, like even when I was pregnant and I found out that I was pregnant with the twins, that is something that bothered me. Sitting here thinking about the fact of that, oh my goodness, I'm going to have four kids at 28. Like, how did I get here? How did I get here? And that really bothered me. If somebody was on the street and they was to say, girl, you got four kids with three, you know what I'm saying? That would have really bothered me, but it took some internal healing, for it to not bother me now and I feel like that's why I'm able to speak my truth that's why I'm able to sit here and tell you guys how it happened and the mindset that I was in because I have evolved from that like you can't say that to me and me be bothered like okay and what else because I told you that or what else what else can you say like okay my kids are taken care of though they're 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 happy they're healthy and I love them and they live in a beautiful home and they are well taken care of. So it's like, you know, and I'm and I'm not saying that to justify my actions at all, because I would not encourage anybody to take the same route that I have taken. But the fact of the matter is the person I am now, I was not that person when I had a child at 17. I was not that person when I had a child at t 21. And hell, I wasn't even that person when I had the twins. Honestly, I mean, yes, I evolved as a person, but it still was just, you know, it's just, it's just now I'm doing the internal work. So I definitely wanted to have my first episode given a background of how I got here, you guys, because I feel like I just want to be a voice for other women that even may not even have any kids right now or maybe have one or, you know, or even young kids that might be 16, 17 or something like that. If it's a mom out there that have a child that age and you scared that she might be about to have a baby, let listen, let them listen to this and let them know, like, listen, little girl, little girl, listen. Don't be out here having no babies. OK, I'm talking to you. Yes, you, you. Don't be out here having no babies. <laughs> like, it's just, I just want to be an example. Use me as an example. Use me. If you got to use me, use me. I'm okay with you using me. Because like I told my brother-in-law all them years ago, I just want to see for myself. I just want to learn for myself. I learned for myself. And it's ghetto. Don't, I, do not recommend zero out of ten stars. <laughs> but... Honestly, all jokes aside, you know, I, I'm happy that I have evolved as a person. I'm happy I have evolved my mindset. And 
I am happy that I am a new and better mom for my twins because I love them. I love all my babies, but I, you know, I'm just saying like, you know, they're fresh. I love my babies so much and I have a boy and a girl and, and God gave me a girl last. And I'm just like, one thing she will do is love herself. And I feel like the reason why I allowed those things to happen you know, as far as me having a child at 17 and then at 21 with somebody I only knew for three months, I did not love myself, you guys. I did not love myself at all. I did not. And I'm not going to say which relationship, but in one of those relationships, I remember they threw money up in the air and let it all fall on the ground and told me, pick it up. And I still was with that person. So that is just one example of things that I allow that I would never allow now. So it's like, I just didn't love myself. And I want my little girl to love herself, love yourself. That is something that I am going to instill in her. And I feel like me loving myself is important because when you have a, even as a parent, if you don't love yourself, your child will pick up on that. And that will be, you know, that can be the cause of a lot of bad actions or a lot of bad choices that they may make. So, you know, it's really important for me to instill that in all my kids, all of my kids, even the boys, definitely to love themselves. But, you know, I feel like that it is a double standard when it comes to boys and girls. And I feel like that boys, you know, they they are looked at as okay to do this and okay to do that and then when it comes to girls it's like it's different or if a girl just like when I had a child at 17 who did the child get stuck with me so I say that to say I did not love myself you guys I have evolved tremendously and I just wanted to give you all my story Um, I hope this was able to help somebody out there or I hope this was enlightening for somebody out there. If you ever wondered, how does she get 28 with four kids and three baby daddies? Now, you know, (laughs) Um, but I just I'm excited for this journey that we are about to take you guys. I have so much to talk about, so many things to tell you guys and I just want to use my voice and be an example and be inspiration for other mothers out there that you can still be a mother and do other. You can you can go on vacation and still be a mom. You can still smoke some hookah and still be a mom. You can still have a drink and still be. a. I got my wine right here. Okay, you can still do these things and still be a mom. It's just all about balance balance okay that is it as far as how I got here also at the end of each episode you guys I'm going to read just a little passage of something that I read in a book throughout the week because like I said I read books every day so I'm gonna read something from to you that I have read throughout the week that I felt like resonated with whatever I'm gonna be talking about so this week And I'm going to pick up my phone. If you're watching visually, you'll see that I'm on my phone. So this week, you guys, I read something that was so good for this episode. So it comes from the book, 101 Essays That Will Change the Way That You Think. And this book is by Brianna West, or I don't know if if her last name is pronounced West. If it's not, I apologize, girl, but it's spelled W-I-E-S-T. And... I love this book, you guys. Like, this book has been amazing. I really recommend that you check it out because it really makes you think. But the passage that I'm going to read is from, it's from page, I don't know. (laughs) It's from chapter 72. And the title of this essay is The Art of Awareness or How to Not Completely Hate Yourself. And it has different bullet points. The bullet point that I am going to read is from number five. So it says, you're supposed to be embarrassed of your younger self. Really, 
It's a mark of progress. It doesn't mean you have to stay embarrassed, though. It's good because it means you're able to look back and wonder, how was I ever at that place, indicating that you're no longer there? I hope you never reach a point in which you look back on your younger self and think, wow, I had it all figured out. That means you stop growing and that means you stop living. And I felt like that was perfect for this episode, you guys, because I definitely look back on my younger self and I'll be like, how was I ever at that place? What was I thinking, honey? (laughs) But that's it for this episode, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. And I am so excited for this journey that we're about to go on, baby, because it's about to be a bumpy ride. Okay, because I got some things to say. So I'll see you all next Friday. Bye.